This episode is brought to you by Honey Gain. Make money with Honey Gain. Welcome to another episode of Podcast and Chill. Oh man, today is so, so crazy. So much is happening, so little time. Uh, I'm going to be chatting to DJ Sabi from YFM. He does the best drive. I'll chat to him in just a short while. But uh, first and foremost, I got to let you know that this podcast is brought to you by Honey Gain. It's a brand new app. And uh, basically, if you want to make money online, this is the app for you. All you need is an internet connection, whether it's on Android, Windows, or Mac OS device. Uh, you can earn money just by keeping Honey Gain to run in the background. Uh, I know you're probably thinking it sounds too good to be true, but it is true. Honey Gain is a completely safe app which allows you to earn some pocket money just for sharing your internet connection. You can toss the money to, sa- uh, to your savings account and spend it on anything you like. And the great thing is that if you register today, you can use my promo code MACG and you will get $5 added to your Honey Gain account. So don't waste any more time. Just uh, press the link in the description down below and start making money right now. Make money online with Honey Gain. All right. And also, I got to send a big shout out to our uh, members. Um, We've opened up a membership on the channel. Uh, you can join if you want to be a member and get some cool exclusive uh, perks for being a member. Some of them include like, you know, uh, behind the scenes footage, unreleased footage, uh, discounts and merchandising, uh, early access to new videos. So yeah, uh, make sure you cl- uh, click that join button and become a member. Big shout out to Johannes Nube, George Seleka, Muranga Toba Kale, and Apendure Pagate. We're all members of Podcast and Chew, and you too can be a member as well. Just click the join button. Podcast and Chew. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko. Shit, nigga. We, ha- we-, we had to get on lockdown for you to put me on the show. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I've been trying to get you on, dog. When I, when I, you work too yeah, damn yeah. much. Nigga, we ha- you, you've had niggas that are more busy than me on the show. What's going on? <laughs> uh, well, this is round one. This is uh, Podcast Light. Oh, Podcast Light. Yeah, yeah. We're going to do a proper one when, 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 when the lockdown's over, man. That's dope, man. What's going on, dog? Hey, first uh, time, you made me use Zoom, bro. I've never used this thing before. Ah, uh, so dope. Everybody's on it right now, man. Yeah. Yeah, the value has just gone through the roof. Like the past, since the lockdown, uh, the company's now valued like four billion or something. Shit, I know vendor men love their chicken. I don't have pop though. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like KFC chicken. Where do you get that, my G? No, I got this a big and pay, bro. Oh, okay, cool. How's, how does it feel being an essential cool? worker, bro? Nah, dog, it's it's good, you know. I feel like we, we, we're playing at the edge, man. Mm. You know? It takes one job to get it, and then we all die. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? So I still feel like it's a risk, but we're taking it for the people because the mass has got to know what's going on, you know? But the station's also making sure, like, the station is, like, the studios are sanitized and shit. Yeah. So it's quite cool. It's quite cool, man. And right now, podcast still going. Yeah, man, we just, we broadcasting from home, so it's pretty much chilled, because everything is pretty, we do everything online, so it's chilled. Yeah. All right, anyway, so Easy, let's start man, the podcast, nigga. man. Uh, good to finally have you. Oh, shit. <laughs> the, oh. And, I, I thought podcasts don't have like a start, like you just roll. Fuck, okay. And the thing is, uh, the last podcast I did, your podcast, got me into so much shit, man. Fucking hell. Come on, man. You just spoke your truth, bro. Yeah, but some people don't want to hear the truth, though, Sam. You know how it is. We've had this conversation, man. We work with people that need, like, therapists because the emotions are just too much. 
And how's your show going? Because you know? uh, last time I spoke to you, um, uh, we were talking about Tepi because it was Tepi's farewell, man. Yeah. How's that going? Yeah, since? no, like we we. Going... Hey, dog! It's 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 weird. It's like, it's like going through a divorce, and then you have a new young thing that you you, you vibe with, and you gotta you gotta make it work again. Uh, but it's exciting at the same time because she's coming through with new energy and and new challenges and and just making you view the world differently because you've always been viewing things a certain way. So it's quite exciting, man. It's it's new energy, new direction. I think as a collective, it 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 came at a at a, at a, at, a, at an unexpected time, but we had to find means and ways to get the ball rolling. But it is exciting, man. And and one can't ignore like I I had worked with with that hand for for like close to seven years. Like when I found wow. her, you know, she joined me on, when I started 12 to three and I had to find a coast. And then I found her, um, you know, she really came through, you know, she, she, was a, she was one of those dominant voices. And what I liked about her, even when I, when I, that made me choose her more than anything else, is she always had an opposite view to everything else. Like for radio purposes, you don't want someone who thinks like you, cause it's just boring, bro. Like. I say yes, you say yes. And she always like took the other side and took the other uh, direction, which always always sounded amazing on the radio. And we had a great chemistry, you know? And I guess she had reached that age or that time in her life where she felt like it's time to move on to, to what's next. Um, but you know, with us men, it takes a while. We, we, we take a while to grow. So, so what why, happened? Why still makes sense for me? What happened between you guys? Uh, because I felt like you were such a great, great team, man. The chemistry came out on air and the show was dope, you know? And she was part yeah. of making that dopeness. So was there a rift between you guys or yeah. it's just, you know, like, I've outgrown this, let me try different, something different? Generally, I also feel like, you know, people, we grow differently. Like, I think she had reached a, a certain point in her life where... Maybe YFM wasn't what she wanted to, it wasn't the platform she wanted to be on because maybe she'd reached a totally different mindset. Oh, so she approached you. Behalf, but... So she told you that she wants yeah, to com- leave the show. It was a conversation that we had, you know, a uh, program manager herself and myself. And, you know, she had informed us that she will be leaving this year. And, you know, and Alta Vis was being groomed for Album Music News. Um, and she was coming through proper, like we're liking her energy and style. Uh, we tried her out to stand in when she wasn't available and we liked it. The audience also liked it. So we decided, you know, just, just put it up in the next the position that was available. But yeah, you know, it, it's hard also to, to get into this conversation because on her end, I don't know why, but I know you, you, she had, when you called in, when I called you in on the last show, um, you know, she said she'll definitely come through on your platform when you guys have the conversation. And I know she dropped the YouTube video. So if people want to check out like her reasons as to why she left, uh, apparently it's on the video. So the mass is going to check that one out. She just started a YouTube channel. So yeah, but there's no animosity between myself and her. Um, cool. Uh, speaking about YouTube, right? I remember, um, <laughs> I think you did the original podcast. <laughs> Yeah, because I remember watching a video of you, Miss Cosmo, and the hip hop school. I don't know what the show was called, but it had a everyday struggle the, kind the, of on vibe. The on the mm. daily, yes, yeah. yes. For me, that mm. is the original podcast. Uh, what happened to that mm. show, man? So the idea came through. There was this lady, man. I forgot her name. So um, herself and Utabi, so were the executive producers behind the show. And they told me, like, they're trying to emulate what looks like everyday struggle. And they generally fuck with my, my opinions and my standpoint when it comes to all the music at large. I was like, okay, cool. I'm cool with it. Uh, they told me Ms. Cosmo is going to be part of the combo, uh, Hip Hop Scholar, and myself. So at first, there were no roles that were assigned. You know, like, I'm sure with The Breakfast Club and, and even with Everyday Struggle, you know, everyone has, it's like everyone's expected to have a certain viewpoint to several things, um, just just to give the show a different dynamic. So, with, with 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 on a daily, it was it was one of those shows that every time we did it and we dropped an episode, 
I realized more and more that this is a truth that is needed in industry, but the game didn't like it. So also another tough thing on my side I realized about the industry, because I'm part of no click, dudes, dudes just always don't know how to react or, or don't know how to, to address me, that some dudes just decide to take a distance. Um, and I know like once we, we had a conversation, I think we're talking about Casper at some point, um, Tilly, Tilly reached out and said, as much as I might not agree with some of the things y'all say, but some, some things have to be said for part of conversation purposes. Like some things need to be said by other people for us to make that decision, whether it's meat or is it, it's bone. So, you know, but what I appreciated from what he had said is that we need a platform like that. And Hip Hop Scholar came through with the mindset where he knew how the deals were structured. It's been in the game for over two decades. Um, he's been the bone for, for several careers. Um, he's been there for a minute. So he would, he would come through on when, when, when a conversation would pop on social media, he would tell you the start and the end of saying, nah, man, y'all niggas don't know what you're, what you're talking about because one, two, three. So he came through with the experience. He came through the, with the boardroom knowledge. He knows how the deals are structured and how they were executed. So there was no, uh, you know, there was nothing random. There was nothing uh, that was frivolous with, with everything that we have put out. And then Ms. Cosmo came through with, with, with her experience also as a club DJ. She's very tied to several people in the industry. And that's what also made the units very, very strong. But then it got to a point where, the, man, why do I forget her name? The, the, the woman that was instrumental in putting it together, she disappeared. And she disappeared at a time where there was a channel that had come through. We were, going, we were going to be on on Sunday between 4 and 5. I remember very well. We were going to be on, on Sunday between 4 and 5 because we didn't on, on want to channel? compete to 6 p.m. On what channel? Um, I don't know. I'm not going to reveal because... Okay. You know, okay. I can't say that, but it was going to be one of those pay channels, four to five, uh, so we wouldn't compete with Zanzi Magic's uh, Date My Family, OPW. So four to five was that gap that we saw that was definitely. Oh, ATV, okay, cool. Going nice. to be key. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. It was, it, and 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 it was going to work out perfectly because Sunday we, we would have touched on some of the big stories that have happened in the week, and would also touch on some key things that we would expect across the week and also timeless content that doesn't need no time frame. Like, and that's one thing that we always strive to do is even if you take an episode of on the daily that we did last year, the first episode you put it on the TV. Now it was still bang uh, because it's still, it was timeless content. There was no timestamp to it as to we, we spoke about this because, and also we had an African approach with everything that we did because I'm big on uh, African, you know, music and as, as a unit in the continent. So that was also my, my, my strong, uh, strong foot on the show. So we we'll talk about any part of the continent and we'll be able to, to dissect that and also educate people while we at it. But what happened there, bro, is one person, you know, didn't communicate with us, disappeared. Um, and then we... We literally just okay, so when, went our own ways. When you see Popcast, then do you feel some type of way? Because it's pretty much the same idea, just more people on the show. I just feel like sometimes the dudes are not being honest, you know, um, because some, some people have friendship first and they don't tell the truth, you know. I'm not saying like, if someone is your friend, I think it's, it's very instrumental like you tell them the truth for their own growth and if you're going to keep like being nice to them there's not then the game is not going to grow in any level um but i i i appreciate you know scoop for me is one dude who's always just he spazzes out he speaks his own mind so i i like the idea that i never know what scoop is going to say when it comes to that panel um but with with everyone else i just feel like it's always it's always safe and I feel like for, for, for hip hop to, to, to break through, uh, there's certain things that need to be said. Like I love, I love how Speast is very, very vocal on social media on his Twitter, even though sometimes he deletes it. I'd like to see more of that, you know, especially on the podcast where he can literally tell it as it is, you know, without having to hold certain things back because he's been such an instrumental DJ for, for the longest of time, you know, putting out records. Uh, putting artists together and just playing the role of a DJ, that it would be dope to hear some of those stories that I feel like haven't been shared 
when when the fans think like everyone is kumbaya and actually they're not kumbaya which is probably one of the reasons why hip hop is not growing as quickly or vastly as it should be because there's still clicks in the movement um and yeah and Vijay also now you know being up there at, at at universal i think he comes through with that very much needed insight on on how talent is spotted on the ground and how talent is taken from one level to the next level so i think everyone has the credentials to be in those seats but i think it's great sometimes to say okay cool i'm cool with these people but this is the truth and and everyone watching should not take it personally the truth is needed sometimes for people to grow and i think that's what we had uh, on the daily um you know cosmo was a friend of everyone game so she would she would be able to would push her to be in the middle to say as much as i know 1 2 3 but this is what i think so she would be able to cover herself up with with that and tell us the truth because it's pointless us coming together man recording and 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 just talk same shit that's on twitter So, so so you, you were that, you were never sour that that, that that you were not on the show so you were never sour about that No 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 not sour at all I know there was there was um another production company that reached out they called myself and Cosmo told us that they would like to do it but there was never a follow through with that meeting uh I know Cosmo really wanted to to do the show because even with on the daily we were starting to think like maybe we need to add another voice you know and we're looking at scoop um cuz scoop had checked out a few episodes and we're like okay cool you know wouldn't mind have scoop to be part of the movement and 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 i knew like cosmos a hustler i knew like she she was definitely going to keep you know sharing sharing or keep the conversation going with several people but i was also busy with other stuff and it just cuz we had to shoot that thing every day in the morning like at 10 o'clock until 11 and it will be able to to finish our our so other errands cuz cosmo took it and ran with it he out out say yes she took it and ran with it and kept the conversation going with other people and there's no bad blood man you know it was a great idea it was a great platform but i still feel like we still need a platform from the very same people but who are tell tell the truth don't tell the truth when you are affected because sometimes i feel like people uh, on such platforms only speak the truth when it affects them you know because maybe for example what's happening between nasty and speedster we getting the real truth because it affects speedster you know let's hear the truth about everyone you mm-hmm. know what i mean based on what you know because you've seen these deals you've interacted with these artists and you've told them one two three instead of holding back uh because you protecting friendship Nah, that's just that's just how i if i tell the truth about you mac it doesn't mean like now we got to have bad blood it just means like bro what i think is you fucked up at that moment and we've had for example our several conversations when you played that clip you knew you were about to jump into lava but you were just fucking serious how fucking hot that shit will be and you did it you know so i think that's 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 just one thing that we need to do is It's tell niggas like you fucked up and I told you you're going to fuck up but you don't want to listen. Yeah. You know, instead of now you having some vibes like because I supposed they said it on the platform. And I think that's what the problem that's what's missing. Even when you watch these fucking TV shows in South Africa and the reason why SA TV shows on TV are not going anywhere is because there's no opinion. Guys are reading auto cue, man. Um mm. guys are just telling us what the freaking script writer wrote like there's there's nothing mm. coming from the heart. There's no one saying um the the song is hot but and that's a, that's why i think live and the ones of this world were dope never and even move back in the day now we're going even t would touch when he was doing you know live amp because those dudes never sees it those dudes had an opinion about music and they shared it and i think that's what's missing right now on tv no one has an opinion about their music everyone is just saying the video is hot when it's not so wouldn't you wouldn't you say the same don't you share the same sentiments when it comes to radio with radio we've had this conversation if if you a shock jock like yourself i remember watching the interview with you and chili i don't I know why like, you keep t- calling me a shock jock dog, dog. <laughs> you are a shock jock you no, are dude i don't um, wake up i don't wake up with my sole mission to shock people no but when you're a shock jock it doesn't mean like it's like fat joe i don't think fat joe wakes up in the morning and he's like fuck i'm just trying to piss people off but sometimes he does he has to make it to work first nice sometimes to blow you're not going to wake it to work but 
people people are shocked, jobs, bro. I'm, I'm not expecting you to read uh, uh, a headline and you're gonna come on fucking radio and tell me the same shit. I already saw it. Y'all niggas just y'all read shit differently and you'll see it differently. And mm-hmm. your opinion is always like, fuck, it's a cliffhanger every time you open the fucking microphone. And mm-hmm. and that's and that's the speciality about the arts that you have as that kind of broadcaster, you know. And then other people take that information and find a way to to share their opinion without offending anyone you know and i think that's that's if if you take any shock jock right now when you ask them the sound of radio fuck all of y'all niggas gonna say radio sounds like shit all of y'all when i watched that conversation between you and chitli one thing i also picked up was that the people you guys were using as references were people who were once part of your clique you know where where you asked him about mo more when he was on Y, man, like that nigga was, y'all lived your best life together. Um, <laughs> six to nine, over the press, three to six in the morning with you. Those, those, those times were edgy radio times, you know. Um, you think back with Fresh when Fresh was on Y, and I'm bringing people that you guys spoke about, those niggas were edgy when they were on Y. But I guess some people grow and they decide to take a different lane when it comes to their career. And and I and I still hear it sometimes with the OG, like for example, Fresh, but it's not like as ruthless as as it was when he was here on Y. And some people decide to grow and change their lanes, uh, but guys like Fat Joe, they just can't stop it. It's 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 there. And even if I put you behind the microphone, two not even two shows in, three shows in, you'll be like, let me actually see how quick the program manager's <laughs> office is to this room, because cause y'all. <laughs> Because you all thread differently. And, and I think it's, it, we all different. And that's what makes, for example, YFM great is that everyone on this platform is absolutely different. And, and now that I'm on drive, my mandate is, 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 is wider, um, like compared to when we did 12 to 3. When we did 12 to 3 in Otepi, shit, nigga, we used to have some funny, freaking scary moments where it would, it would you know when you do something and you're scared, and you mm. do it as soon as you mm. die. Fuck, we did that shit. Yeah, oh, yeah. fuck. And now you yeah, you leave the show. You're like, fuck. Someone is probably waiting for us outside. Uh, you wake up in the morning. You're like, shit. Okay, cool. Everything is still normal. Then you want that feeling again. You want to do it again. You know what I mean? Twelve to three allowed us to do that shit. And on drive, when we got to drive, it's we can do it, but not as crazy. You know what I mean? Like twelve to three, our mandate is don't worry about politics. Drive and breakfast will take care of that. You just hang out with these people. Students, um, are, you know, they, they're studying at home or they're getting ready for the next class. People are in the office. Just keep them laughing. Uh, get them through the day so they can get ready for drive. That was our mandate, which means risk, 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 fun, 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 fun. Literally brief was fun. And we did just that. But when you get to drive, hey, dog, it's, now it's, a, it's totally different. You you got to do that, but not as much. So what do you think of the media right now in the country? I think there are guys that are... I think when it comes to males, we... There's, there's, there's like, you can probably count five guys or, or three that probably got next. You know what I mean? I'm, see, I'm hearing a lot more ladies that are really sounding freaking hard, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. And yeah. also, part of this feels like they, 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 there's something also, there's, there's a generation. I remember I had this conversation with another joke. I'm like, there's a generation that has to resign or, or move over for the next generation to come through. Okay, and just, just, just pause it right there. Part, yeah. Just pause yeah. it right there. I've got Justice on the line. Justice, how are you, bro? Can you hear us? I'm all right, man. How's it? Good man, Sebi, so what do you want? To, what do you want to ask Sebi, bro? Hey, yes, DJ Sebi, how's it, man? I'm the Vua, man. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't speak Sebi. I'm the Vua, man. 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 No, um, hmm. I was just asking, man. Um, so, are you are you also uh, broadcasting from home on your show? No, not as yet. Um, we we're still broadcasting from the studio. 
um, mm -hmm. until further notice. But that option is there. If you want to broadcast from home, you can. Marana Grata Strata, Joe, so I don't drive to <laughs> All right, man. Yeah. Um, and I just want to say, man, I'm a biggest fan. Um, actually, we're expecting to see you in the biggest radio station in the coming years, man. Um, I remember ah, you, were you. you were teaching us uh, how to do radio the back then in 2013, man. You are good, man. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much, brother. All right, Thank Justice, uh, listen over the radio, ne? All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! You can get calls from this, bro. I had no idea. Yeah, bro. This is a new school. New school, bro. New school. I mean, how does it work? So I can tweet it and shit. Like, how does it work? Yeah, it's like it's just a, a an app. It's like Hangout. So I I just tweet the link. Yeah, you just tweet the link, and then people can join. It's just that this guy he turned his camera off. We could have seen him as well. Ah, Mac, me, I had no idea. I'm thinking like you're recording this thing um, and it's going to go live when it goes live, you know, on YouTube and shit. Nah, Man, bro. I didn't know that, bro. This is Mac Genesis 2.0. Yay, <laughs> hey, MacGyver. So I'm right, tweeting so yeah. this right now, bro. I, no I want to see more. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we can keep it going. Yeah, so as you're saying, uh, before I cut you off, yeah. State of radio, yes. Mm. Yeah. The ladies are coming with fire. Radio. Yeah. Yo, I, I, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, the ladies are really coming through with fire. Like, I hop on. Sometimes I check out, like, community radio just to hear. It's talking on community radio, I think niggas need to stop on community level thinking, like, it's just the homies that are listening or it's mm. just the people on campus. Nah. Mm. Like, when I was looking for, for Alta Vis, a woman to take over. Let me not say a woman also. Like, a voice to take over that segment that we had created, there's no dude I heard mm -hmm. that I was like, shit, yep. that, that, dude, that dude got sauce. Um, yep. And also, like, when I heard the ladies, I'm like, yes, yes. You know, like, from, from, from just the, the link itself and also just the opinion uh, and, and, and just the, the delivery. Like, one thing you got to sound like, you got to be present when you're freaking on behind the microphone. And some dudes, it's like they present, but they just busy with some other shit. So we like a second option. I'm like, this nigga, like, what the fuck is going on? But I have to say, like, the ladies right now, like, whew, yeah. they're on fire. They yeah. really, really on fire. They really, really are on fire. My, my thing, I, I feel like, grow, I, still... I feel like, sorry to cut you off there, man. Um, because obviously yeah. when, when I was at Y, you were uh, just from the Y Academy. Um, and yeah. and you still you still there now? I think you're part of the furniture or something like that. Um, but the thing. <laughs> no, bro. Look, listen. Let me let, not to cut you short there. I get that a lot, and I always say, when, when I look at some some. Oh, when I got to why, bro? Let me tell you this. When I got to why, I told myself I'm gonna spend my twenties here. Yeah. Period. Yeah. I'm gonna at the age of twenty. I'm fucking probably gonna leave this thing at thirty or thirty-one because. The industry is so freaking small, bro, like in South Africa, like it, especially if you want to play a long game. And I know we've had this conversation. If you want to play a long game, I know like if I leave Y at 31, for example, yeah. or 32, I can still go through at five and go through at Metro and run another five or six years. Because for niggas like me, this is no, there's no plan B, bro. Like this is, mm. this mm. is it. This is, this is my radio career until I go down like the jam. I bought my banner. Like this is it. I'm probably going to, you know, I lost my mama behind the microphone. And, and mm. when that moment happened, I'm like, fuck, this is, this is one of those things where you're like, when you found what you want to do forever, I'm definitely going to do this thing until I die. Even if I leave now and I go to another part of the world to try out radio, which is something I still want to do. Hence, I travel and I broadcast from these parts of the globe. Mm. It's because I'm still trying to find shit. Can I rock in Singapore? What's there? What's there in London? You know, what's there in... In America, like, like American radio for me is like I don't rate it highly because they shout oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. But if you listen to Australian radio, you listen hey. to American radio, hey. uh, not American, Latin radio, it's Europe at large, and then you listen to, uh, you know, what's popping also. Like when what I heard in Singapore, man, like I was like, oh shit, they radio here. Like you know, there's a station called Nine Eight Seven. I was I'm like, oh shit, like y'all, y'all actually freaking do radio. Then I started looking into more platforms. But if you want to play the long game. You gotta think long. Like you fresh did like what, ten years at Y? And he can still he can you still do another 20, bro. 
you know, you, you, know, you can. You know, Mo did like nine years at Y, Tolly did 10. And we came through, the thing is that we came through, and I remember having this conversation, you know, I was asking you like, bro, like, you were counting cash actually in the morning. You came through from your gigs and you were fixing your money. You know what I mean? I'm like, shit, dog, like that's so much cash. Like, how do you, how do you make so much money? And you're like, if you're going to be worried about my money, you'll never make your own money. I re- I'll never forget this. And I tell you all the time. Yeah. And it hit me because I was like, oh, shit, actually, you know, <laughs> focus on your own shit. So what, what, play for the same. what, what do you yeah? think is the difference between the why then, like 2008, 2009 days to the why now? Because you were there for both generations. I think, for example, some of the new generation don't ask questions like we do, bro. Um, the, the new generation also doesn't want to swallow their pride. Bro, I didn't mind holding your CD, your, your CD bags and being your, the back guy. I, mm. Like, I didn't mind being the back guy for a long time until my time comes. Um, the, ju- the new generation wants to be on immediately. Mm. Like, put me on, I'm better than savvy. You know mm. what I mean? And you, you put the nigga on to, to stand in, you, know, you, know, you don't move the ground. You know, we're having this conversation with my producer the other day. It's like when we go on holiday and I, when you stood in for Dineo after she gave birth, nigga, she was, she cut her leave shorts and she came through <laughs> because, because it was, the studio was on fire. You know what I mean? She came through blazing. When Zamatube stood in for Bonang, you know what I mean? Like Zamatube freaking came through and, and dam- like she, she damaged the entire thing because that's, that's, that's the school of radio I come from. When you stand in, nigga, when you stand in, you shut it down. Yeah. There's no coming through with being humble. And also shutting it down doesn't mean you play your liners and all that kind of shit everywhere. It means when you turn on the microphone, you're literally killing it. Mm-hmm. You know? And I think that's the new school of radio. Some of the guys don't understand that mindset. Like, for, for, we looked forward to December. Like, there was a time in December where we did three shows in one day because I'm ready. There was a time where I stood, I did my graveyard show between three and six. Muto couldn't make it. I did six to nine. So I did three to nine o'clock, two shows back to back, six hours on. I was like, I want this. You know what I mean? So give me any show right now. I'm a body it. You know, to, to an extent where people start suggesting in April that give this nigga a show, put this yeah. nigga on because you've been freaking fighting. And I think the new generation, it's, it's fine to swallow your pride. You're great. You're talented. We see it but you just haven't proven yourself. You haven't earned your stripes. Earn your stripes, you know, move up the ladder. Mm-hmm. Uh, also at YFM back then, there was a culture of, um, of seniority. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. make she's a senior. Poor mm-hmm. my boy's a senior. Poor my boy used to walk in, she would be on her phone, and she'd be like, I need a computer. If you're so it's you fucking know. Russia. Hey man, who's you that see? now? <laughs> I don't know. Hello. I tweeted it, man. So I think the masses are joining now. No, oh. hello. Hello. Is this hello. MC? How are you? Yes, hello. 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 Hello, you. Good, man. What's your name, bro? Hello, you. hello. hello. Uh, you can call me. You just call me Emma for now. Are you calling from Russia? Yes, I'm from Soviet Russia. All right, cool, man. DJ Sad is here. What do you want to ask him? Yo. DJ Sabe. Yeah, what do you want to ask him? Guys, yeah, some sorry about Russia. <laughs> what do you want to ask him? <laughs> There's that fake Gucci. <laughs> what Gucci? Just fake Gucci. There's no Gucci, nigga. That is fake Gucci. <laughs> like your fake, <laughs> your fake like Gucci. Your fake Gucci. Shut up. There's like so fake Russia. Are these your good No, like your fake boy. <laughs> hey, shut your mouth, buddy. Huh? Shut your fucking mouth. How dare you speak No, shut like your that. mouth. Yo, yeah, Sydney Mazzy, I'm going to smash your egg head in. <laughs> There's Yo, no Sydney, out here. I'm going to smash wrong with you? your head in, buddy. Oh, my goodness. You're going to smash my head. Who is the that, bro? Y'all got, got fake balls, nigga. Like, y'all talk heavy, but can't do shit. Is that, one of you, accent. is that one of your listeners, bro? <laughs> I have no idea who that nigga is, dog. But, yeah. That, 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 that was the seniority part that you were talking about between now and then, yeah. I think it's important, bro. Mm. It, it inspires you to work towards something. Mm. Mm. You know, like, I never hate Mpo, my boy. Mpo had some real rules, my nigga. Like, yeah. Mpo, my boy had rules like, 
you only walk into studio if there's a reason. You mm. don't fucking walk into studio just because you want to chill. And she so gets mad, bro. My traffic and fuck off. She get mad. And, and I respected that because you learned how people work. Like, Tolly totally also had that thing is, you don't just freaking talk to my listener without preparing for my listener. Because Tolly totally was clean like that. Like, Tolly totally was, you come in to do traffic, do your traffic. If I ask you something, you'll talk. You're not just going to start blabbling here for no freaking reason. And we, 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 I went through that school. I saw also how Spoo, Spoo had organized chaos, dog. That six to nine thing, big number But everyone knew Spoo was a host of that shit. And, and there, was, there was order there. Um, there was Mpoma Boy. There was also Bonang. Bonang had, Bonang had this thing also, bro, like where you just don't talk to me, you know. Mm. Mm. But I'm friendly. I'm not mm. mean. I'm not mean or anything else. So she gave that energy off and I liked it. I was like, oh, that is nice. Where people think you're intimidating, but generally you're a nice person. But they see you like that. You know what I mean? And, and, and then there was you. They called you the young mosquito. You know, <laughs> you were just friendly, always chilling in the back with your, with your big... Mac G used to come through with this, guys, with this ice cream, caffeine, eating his pup at the back, prepping his talk to three show. You know, like... He was just that guy, you know. You you think he's broke as fudge, but he would probably buy all the girls, the bottles in the club. Like you were just that guy, you know. Um, and that was why, bro. Then they were, and 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 I appreciate that. To this day, I say we come from that school that take that took us through. You went to grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four. Now we're right. in a generation where guys want to move from grade seven to grade twelve. This episode is brought to you by Honey Gain. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko.